Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about week D and um, if you remember the specimen that we had was B negative. I didn't run a B or D control uh, next to the anti-D because um, I didn't think about it at the time. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to actually do the D control which is going to be here. This is going to be um, the D control reagent which actually has every additive in it um, except the anti-D antibody like the um, RH testing did okay and so what we're going to do is we're going to test what we test previously with the um, ABO we're going to do the D that we did before but this time we're going to add the anti-D uh, control reagent and um, what you want to think about before you ever do this is uh, this is basically done on donor units before they are sent to a facility or um, if there's a transfusion center in that facility, um, then they will do it there to make sure that what they say is on the label of the unit is actually the truth. So <clears throat> if you have a person who has weak D who has donated, that means they don't have a very prominent expression of the D antigen on their RBCs. So um, if we did not test uh, for the weak D on those donor units, then if somebody who did have um, a D antibody uh, was transfused with those cells, they would react to those cells. So if anybody does have weak D um, or a weak D expression on their, uh, an sorry, on their RBCs, then that donor unit is labeled as D positive and would be treated as such when um, uh, treating the patient. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, we have um, the reagents that we add first. So um, if you did this in regular testing, I've had a few days in between testing, um, you would have just saved the uh, D that you had before, or you would have run it next to the D uh, during testing. But again, you really only do this test for donor units and for um, any um, say prenatal uh, patient to see if they would uh, react to um, react to D due to uh, previous pregnancy. You don't want to do this on uh, any patient who has had a positive DAT because that means the RBCs are already sensitized with the um, anti-D uh, antibodies and therefore you'd get a false positive anyway. So the D control is actually to make sure that the positive is truly positive um, when testing for D in prenatal uh, patients and donor units. So we added one drop of each of the reagents to each of the tubes. Now I'm going to add the one drop of my red cell suspension to each of the tubes. And I'm going to spin them for 15 seconds. And I will get back to you.